God. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise.
we celebrate on the phone. He don't call Daryl because he know Daryl had just lost his baby. So he didn't want to call with the news about having his wife pregnant. But Daryl found out about it that same night and Daryl calls him and tells him how excited he is for him. Check back in a week uh, to, to, to do the, the, the DNC, whatever it's called, y'all. I'm sorry. Listen, that, 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 that week, that Thursday that happened, that week I had been spending time with the Lord. Amen. I had been spending time with the Lord. Yes, Doc always talked about Smith Wigglesworth. Amen. And I had been listening to a lot of his messages on healing and how God healed people and delivered people through this man. And that, and that Thursday night when it happened, that Thursday evening she called me. I ain't gonna lie, I was hurt. I was hurt. It, it hurt me bad. I, I, I can't tell you how I felt. You know, but Doc told y'all last week that, that Wednesday we had just got through talking about uh, intoxication and how things in this life will intoxicate you. You get bad news, uh, uh, bad situations arise in your life, and it will intoxicate you. It'll knock you, it'll shake you if you don't watch yourself. But the Bible says that we have to gird up the loins of, of our mind. That's what you learn that now. And so after, after a moment or so, I was down, I felt bad, it was, it was horrible. But, but, I, but I understood who I was in Christ Jesus. I, you know, it came right back to me that we just talked about intoxication. That Thursday night, y'all, my wife seemed to be, she was so much concerned about me and I was so much concerned about her, you know, but we still had peace. Even when I talked to Adrian, I said, man, listen. Hey man, listen, man, listen, congratulations. He said, man, I didn't want to come to you about that. Man, the Bible said if you keep your mind on him, you keep your mind on him. Man, we had peace in our house. Adrian couldn't even understand the peace that I had. I didn't even understand. I give you peace that surpassed all understanding. I couldn't even understand it. That, that night I was I was still spending time with the Lord, and, and the, the Lord had me on healing that week for whatever reason. And when I went in the room, I went in my closet and I prayed. I took some oil and I anointed myself. And I, I was asking God to forgive me for whatever sins that I, 
that I may have committed that I even didn't know I committed. And, and, and I used to struggle with high blood pressure and diabetes. I know, y'all don't understand. I'm still taking medication, but I used to struggle with diabetes and high, diabetes and high blood pressure. So I'm in the closet and I'm praying and I'm anointing my own self because that's what I've learned here. I've learned my, I, I, I'm anointing my own self with God. So when I got out the closet, I went in my kids' room and I began to pray over them with all. And I began to lay hands on them. Whatever sickness or disease that may have tried or, or may be trying or may be in their body, I was casting it out before it, before it ever uh, uh, developed into anything. So as I, I went in the room and my wife was laying in the bed, and the Lord said, pray over that baby. Oh, but the devil came. Man, the devil came. The devil said, man, what's wrong with you? You're going you to man, the doctor said that baby dead. And you're going to pray over that? I knew it was the devil because the Lord would have never told me that. The Lord would have never said that. I said, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Help me with my Because the doctor said this baby is dead. God, help me with my unbelief. So I put my hands on my wife's head and I began to pray over her body. I began to pray that God heal her. Uh, 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 make her whole of whatever that has taken place in her body. And before I even knew it, I laid my hands on my stomach, y'all. And I began to ask God to bless that baby. Amen. The baby that the doctor said was dead. Yeah. I asked God to bless that baby. Yeah. Uh, listen, listen. Lazarus was dead, y'all. Lazarus was dead. It didn't stop Jesus from going to that, that city. It didn't stop Jesus from traveling in those four, four days. Lazarus was dead. They said the baby was dead. I hope y'all hear me. They said this baby was dead. They didn't say he was dying. He went on life. He was dead, y'all. And I laid hands and I prayed over that baby. I prayed over that baby. My wife told me that, 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 that Wednesday night the, the doctor told her to go home before that Thursday. She was on her way home and she was holding her stomach saying, you will not die. You will live and you won't die. Man, listen, you gotta be careful. Your faith sometimes, your faith will go farther than you will sometimes. And she believed that that, and before they gave her the news, she believed that baby wasn't gonna die. Uh -huh. Man, we didn't even realize what we were saying. We didn't, when we was praying and blessing that baby, we didn't realize what we were saying. But God is faithful, y'all. I laid hands on that baby. I spoke life over that baby. I blessed that child, even though the doctor said he was dead. So when, when, when. I don't know what that was, Monday or Tuesday, whenever it was, came along. My wife said, man, they said that uh, this baby got a heartbeat. Listen here, y'all. Listen here. Now, you know, you know. Listen, the devil will tell you they just read the report wrong. They, they was wrong. They, they, they was wrong. You know, that one God, that was just a mistake. That same lady that did the ultrasound that Thursday that said, one no baby? That same lady, she went to that Wednesday, and she was sitting there with her mouth open. She didn't understand. She said, listen, I know what I'm doing. I've done this for many years, uh, but I got a heartbeat. I can measure the baby now. The baby's heart sound bad you know. Listen, the doctor didn't understand. I'm not lying to you. The doctor didn't understand. And, and if they try to give you a medical side of it, that's a lie from the devil. God raised that baby. you're going through. I don't know your situation. Ours was a baby being dead. Yours may be finances. Yours may be a marriage. Yours may be sickness. I don't know what it is. But you better believe God. Yeah. If God said it, God, if God said it, he's going to do it. Yeah. Listen, you learn him to lay hands. You learn him to pray, to, to cast out demons. Yes. We can do it, y'all. I yes. promise you we can do it. Yes. Because the Bible says, don't, do you, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Everybody that believes in Jesus got that Holy Spirit living in them. I know everybody in here got the Holy Ghost living inside them. When I laid hands on that baby, when I laid hands on that baby, I was God extended. The Spirit of the Lord was laying hands on that baby. And God healed that baby. And I'm sorry, God raised that baby. How do you want to say it? He brought him back to life. I believe it. And I don't care what nobody else say, when no doctor, no lawyer, no anyone else can tell me, God did it. And I, I can tell you that.
that's going to preach today. Bring the word of God to us today is, is one of my brothers. Amen. Met this couple. We met this couple before we got married. We met Frank and Phyllis Barn. And they were members of our church, Emmanuel Church of God in Christ. And Frank was a we were young men at the time. We were young men, but he was a young man on fire for God. Oh, a man who was after God's own heart. And most of the rest of us was just kind of, you know, just growing and, and, and you know, kind of one foot in and one foot out. But Frank had both feet in. And I remember us sitting in a setting and them asking us, what do we want, who do we want to be like and what do we want to be? And I remember saying, I want to be like Frank Barnes. He was in that meeting. I want to be like Frank Barnes because I had watched his life. I had watched him with his wife and with his children. And I just knew I wanted to be like Frank Barnes. I wanted to have the mannerism and the patience and the words that he had. He wasn't a minister. He wasn't a deacon. He was just a man that loved the Lord. Just a young man that loved the Lord. And he was here by way of the military back in those days and and um, got a beautiful family, beautiful wife, Phyllis Barnes, amen. And his daughter, Ashley, that's here with him. Stand up, Ashley. <clears throat> amen. This is, this is Ashley. And she's special to Henrietta and I. She's our goddaughter. Amen. She's a, our goddaughter for a reason. Amen. Because... In October of the year that we got married, we got married in August, October of that year. You know, I was a young firefighter down at Central Station, and we had all just left church. And Phyllis was pregnant with with Ashley, and uh, we got a call that Sunday evening to their house. Um, Phyllis had gone into labor. When the dress came over the loudspeaker, and we hopped on the truck, I said, "I don't know." I know that, that that address. And as we were driving there, and I knew I'd been to Frank's house and eaten there many times, I said, Man, that's Frank's house. And I put two and two together, that's gotta be Phyllis. <laughs> and um, I had the privilege uh, as a firefighter of uh, delivering this baby. <laughs> amen. And, um, Cutting her and giving her cord, amen, and cleaning her up and suctioning her out, amen, and watching her take her first breath. The same way I did Oliver and Joy and Jane and Lauren. Had the privilege of watching them born, and she has grown to be a beautiful, 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 beautiful girl. Amen. We were at their church this year in revival. Amen. And got a chance to spend some time with them. And, and when we were redoing our vows, wanted somebody to, to uh, redo our vows that had been married um, for some time. They've been married 37 years, 36 years. And, um, and, and so they came in and they were, they were, uh, came in to do it. And uh, we were so honored. But I am more honored to have him uh, stand in this pulpit and before the people of God to bring the word of God, amen, amen to us on today. A man for a minute loves the Lord, but before he comes, I want to um, bring his daughter, Ashley, up, amen. She's going to have her way, amen. And she's like her mama. Her mama never, at church, her mama never had shoes on at church. I remember Phil, you remember, you remember Kathy? I remember Fifty, this Kathy Wood ago, Willie sister back here. I remember Phyllis, I used to look to see if she even came to church with shoes. Because I had never seen no with shoes on. I seen Ashley. She got some shoes back there, but she just like them. Sometimes when you think you're trying to be cute, you can't. You just can't worry about it. Can't worry about being cute. 
Amen. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Um, you all are beautiful people. This is a beautiful church. I've been having such a good time. My god sister, her voice is incredible. <laughs> God, I feel he allowed um, Lauren to just kind of put put me right in the atmosphere of that. So I thank God for that. So y'all pray for me. If you know the songs, please sing them.
Thank you.